I'm going to show you three different AI prototyping tools and when I suggest using them at different stages of your product workflow, plus a bonus tool that helps PMs make actual changes to the front end code. Hey, I'm Diane. I'm the co-founder of The Design Project. I've worked with Crocs and Mercedes-Benz. I've been a solo designer for five SaaS B2B startups. And today we help over 50 B2B SaaS companies ship products faster with AI. Some of our customers have been acquired by Mr. Beast, Slack, and NVIDIA. I'm sharing how I work with PMs now and the AI prototyping tools that are speeding up brainstorming and discovery processes. Based on the data, 80% of top performing PMs are now prototyping with AI. Different tools work better for different stages. Today, I'm going to show you exactly when to use which tool and even how PMs can make actual code changes, so stick around. I'm going to use an example. We are redesigning our website design project Io. Specifically, we need to rethink our entire signup flow. Instead of spending hours coming up with wireframe and specific design specs, I'm using AI prototyping tools to generate ideas. This is the new PM workflow, rapid prototyping to accelerate discovery. The tools we're covering today, lovable for early stage idea generating and quick prototyping. V0, when you have an existing design system and need to create prototypes that feel branded. Figma make, if your team lives in Figma and you're Figma savvy. Bonus, I'm gonna show you Claude code and cursor for making actual front end code changes to your product. Each tool serves a different purpose at a different stage. Let me show you. For all of these, I'm using the design project signup flow as an example. I took my PRD and I created a prompt to feed into all of these prototype AIs. Now let's dive into each tool and when to use them. Lovable is for the very early stages. When you have an idea, you've written your PRD and you want to quickly generate something to visualize your concept. This is one of my faves because I think it works really well for non-technical users like PMs and stakeholders. It has a super easy and intuitive interface. It also has great suggestions to help PMs think differently about their ideas. And a side note, it does create a full working application. I just prefer to use it for these early ideas. Okay, here we are in Lovable. Let's paste our prompt generated from our PRD. Okay, it's gonna tell us exactly what it's gonna be doing. Great. Okay, let's see. Still working on it, but I'm starting to see something come to life here. Donna telling us it did, and it's also suggesting what's next. So let's take a look. So it has this progress bar up here. Say we want to do pro. Now it's going to require us to put in this information. This should be a drop down. So interesting, it's not. Okay, telling me to agree, payment. Okay, I like these cards, very simple. Great, I put this in the prompt if they wanna click here. You have to put in this information. Small. Oh, look, even some fireworks. Okay, so great. I mean, that clearly took the PRD that I put in and it came up with something. It doesn't necessarily look like my product, but it came up with an idea of a stepper that I had in my head. About five minutes from prompt to prototype. So when should you use Lovable to get a prototype like this? When you need to demo actual functionality to your internal team, stakeholders, PMs, devs, designers. You want to test user flows with real interactions and states. Speed is a priority. The PM workflow for Lovable it's not going to create the best designs. It's not going to give you great code, but it's really great for quick prototyping and coming up with some early ideas to share with your team. Next, V0. This tool is designed specifically for teams already working with design systems. It's more technical than lovable, and it generates production-ready React components. The code is copy paste ready for your React projects, and it's excellent at handling complex interactions. Now more technical PMs can go in and create prototypes of their ideas, but pulling from their components so it looks exactly like their product. Same prompt, but V0 already has my component library, so let's see what happens. Okay, so it's actually already building upon this page that's in here. Let's see what happens when I click get started today. So it definitely has more of the look and feel pulling some of my components. Ooh, this is a little funky. I'll have to change this around. But let's put in our information. So similar to what we had, which works for now. Say crypto, also same. Submit. Okay, so there you have it. It's a little more branded. 
Um, the stepper bar feels more modern, more like the app that I currently have. From prompt to prototype, it took three minutes, a little faster than lovable, most likely because it already had those components to work off of. You can use V0 if your team is already using React components. You have a developer ready to implement. You're building complex interactions and logic. You want to maintain a component library. The PM workflow could look like, hey devs, I just prototyped the signup flow in V0. It's pulling from our production ready React components already. Here's the code, you can probably integrate it today. This means you can remove the designer, you can go straight to the prototype and hand it off to the devs. Okay, when to use Figma main. When you have designs in Figma and your design team is already working there and you're Figma savvy as a PM, you could easily go and start making something. It's not as intuitive as lovable. It doesn't have a great output like V0, but if you as a PM like Figma, there's definitely value here. It stays in your existing design workflow and there's no context switching. Your designers can pick up where the AI left off. Okay. Let's go into Figma Make. This is a starting place that I'm going to use to generate the signup flow. So I can right click here, send to Figma Make. Plops, design pixel perfect. I could probably be a little more clear with my prompt, but let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. There's definitely a few changes here. It's not exact, um, but we have a starting place. So let's make those changes really quick and then let's start with my prompt. Okay, so let's plug this prompt in for the additional pages and let's see what comes up. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, interesting. So it pulled a pop-up, which is not what I would have chosen. Um, But this feels very similar to V0. It's pulling from the design system and everything clearly. It's a scrollable pop-up. Interesting. Okay, so very similar to the other ones. Um, I can choose one. Let's see how it looks here. Yep. Okay, perfect. And submit. So there we have Figma Make. Figma Make took about five minutes from prompt to prototype. Use Figma Make when your team already lives in Figma. You want seamless PM designer handoff. Design fidelity and polish are required. You need to integrate with an existing design system. Designers will significantly iterate on this first concept. The PM workflow is, hey designers, I created an initial concept in Figma Make. You can take it and make it better. You're giving your designers a head start so they're not starting from scratch. Okay, bonus tool is when to use Claude code within cursor as a PM. This isn't really for prototyping something quick and dirty like we've been talking about. This is more at a level of building something you wanna push code for. And you can actually make changes yourself as a PM in the code, which is super cool. Claude code and cursor allow PMs to be more technical. You can now do small front end changes directly in the code. So this isn't really about rapid prototyping and coming up with that first concept. This is about one, making actual front end changes to your code. Two, fixing small UX bugs yourself. Three, adjusting spacing, copy, small changes yourself. And four, pushing real code that goes into production. Okay, now I'm gonna show how to actually build a screen in Claude Code within Cursor. So what you'll see here is this is our Figma designs. I have actually already built this out in Claude Code and Cursor, this page. You can see it here, it's already built out. Now I need to build out the signup flow. So what I've done, is I have, as a designer, gone in and updated the pricing flow to be one page. So we've seen three examples where the idea was that it would break it up into steps. Based on my deep research and knowledge as a designer, I decided that we could reduce the content and put it into one page. So this is what you see here. This is what I'm going to code. So I'm going to go into Claude Code in Cursor. Do you see my pricing? page. I want to make sure that it actually sees this page. It looks like it found it. Great. Now I'm going to put in this prompt. When a user clicks start here, they should be sent to this Figma selection page. So I'm linking to this Figma selection. Please build out to pixel perfection, everything. Let's get started and let's see what it does. Great. So it's giving me these updated to do's that it's going to be working through. Okay, let's go see how it looks. So it looks very big, definitely needs some design help overall, um, which I need to go back to. 
but they do function. So it looks like the font it definitely did something funky. Um, so it does have some error states, which is great. Checking this box, done. Okay, so it definitely picked up some of the branding. I definitely need to go back and update the page a bit and go back and forth with it. But what's really great is these are the iterations that I've done. This is powerful because now as a PM, you can go directly into the code and make small changes, build designs, have a starting place instead of relying completely on the engineering team. Some of the things you can do are test small UI changes before bringing them to the team, make updated copy easily, adjust styling without waiting in the dev queue, become more technical and learn to speak more of that dev language. And an important note is it is more technical. You will need to learn some things about code, but it's way more accessible than you think. Okay, here's how I think about using these tools at different stages. For early stage idea generation, use Lovable. For mid-stage design team alignment, use V0. If you're a designer focused stage, use Figma Make. If you wanna make and implement production changes, use Claude Code within Cursor. And these aren't mutually exclusive. If you're starting a new feature, use Lovable. If you wanna build on top of something you already have, use V0. The real value of these tools is they can get ideas flowing, test ideas quickly, give designers and developers a head start, but they still need that human refinement, that brand application and accessibility review. The real power isn't that you can produce a prototype in 10 minutes. It's that you can generate five prototypes in 30 minutes. More iterations means better product decisions. The PM role is evolving. You're no longer blocked by design and dev to explore new ideas. So start simple and get comfortable. Don't use all these tools at once. Pick one that matches where you are in your product process and build your skills gradually. So there you have it, four tools for different stages of your PM workflow. This is how I'm working with PMs now. If you wanna see more deep dives on any of these tools, I'll be doing more deep dives of these tools in future episodes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.